Hi guys, thanks for joining me today in my studio. I've just put the last brush full onto this oil painting. It, I used the pastel sketch I did last week as a reference for the painting. Really liked it, so I thought this is gonna be so cool to do uh, in oils. Use really vibrant colors, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it, going through it step by step, brush stroke by brush stroke. So let's get right into it. So I had this uh, pretty unimpressive photo, you can see that on the screen now, and I began with a digital drawing in Artrage, uh, and from that I, dis I liked it so much I produced a pastel sketch. I made videos of both of those, you can watch the digital painting on my digital channel and the pastel one on here, I'll put links to both of those in the description below, but this painting was completely the only reference I used for the all of this painting was the actual pastel drawing, which you can see in the top left there now. You can also see it uh, in the video where it's positioned above the canvas that I'm working on. So you can see I'm just sort of sketching in the tree trunks very loosely, and that's just to get the composition right. I, I sort of I thought that would be a good place to start. And this is a really, really easy painting to do. So I thought I would do it step by step and give a real breakdown. Uh, so hopefully you can paint along with me or have a go after and uh, hopefully it helps you out a little bit. You can see the paints going on really, really well. This because this is because I'm using um, an old canvas that had got a painting on that had sort of stood in the corner for like over a year. So I put three coats of gesso primer or gesso, depending on how you pronounce it, uh, over the uh, original painting. I sanded the original painting down first with some proper coarse sandpaper and then just put this gesso on and the paint just slid on it. Uh, so that made it so much easy. And I'm using lots and lots of liquid, um, Windsor and use liquid as a thinning agent uh, for the paint so all the paints I'm using are Windsor and Newton colors you can see them on the screen now and um, I'm using phthalo turquoise quinacridone magenta and cobalt blue the quinacridone magenta and the cobalt blue is the colors that I'm using now to mix those purples and I mixed up three batches one of mostly cobalt with a tiny little bit of uh, magenta and then uh, a few more uh, batches where I added more magenta to each one so I could dip in each of the colors and get a variety uh, of um, color going there and I'm using Indian yellow burnt sienna for some nice reds and some sap green so the color I'm putting on now is a mixture of the cobalt blue and magenta to make a nice purple. Then I added some of the sap green to get this really deep green. It, on the video, it's looking quite uh, almost black there, but in actual fact, it is um, a very dark green. You can see better now that it's actual green. So I'll go in and I'm blocking in really, just uh, with this very thin paint, all, I'm beginning with all of the darks and leaving nice light areas to go in with the bright colors because I want to keep these spaces to put the really bright primary colors in uh, so that they're not mixed and polluted with the uh, darker colors. And at the minute, I'm only using that one brush uh, just for the darks. And you'll see that I swap out the brushes when I'm using... Um, lighter colors so go, co continuing with the uh, color palette then we've got the sap green and then we have primary yellow and I've got an asterisk next to that because all the other colors are Windsor and Newton apart from the primary yellow I didn't have any Windsor and Newton in that and I'm actually using a Rowney uh, De La Rowney Georgian uh, color for the primary yellow so that is the only color that isn't artist quality. All the others are artist quality paints. So that is the, the, the palette that I'm working with. So 
So now we're going in. This is the burnt sienna, and it's just pretty much pure burnt sienna. Sienna. I wiped the brush on a bit of tissue before I dipped it in the burnt sienna. So the colour is still in the brush, and you can see it's mixing in with that burnt sienna to um, sort of mix up the colour a bit. And I'm just sort of popping that tree in there. Just thinking of the shape. And what I'm thinking, what's going through my head now is um, the canvas I'm painting on is slightly different shape to the pastel drawing. So the tree is going to be a little bit elongated or am I going to move the trunks up a little bit to um, meet that tree? In actual fact, what I do, I think I bring the tree down. So once I've got that nice, bright, vibrant red on, I'm quite happy to go paint into it with the darker purple colours. And you can see there I decide to bring that tree down somewhat. So I'm sort of composing it as I'm going along. I haven't sketched this one out uh, as I normally do. Or and when I say sketch it out, I mean use the paintbrush to sketch it out. I'm just... Um, going with the flow and feeling it as, as I'm working. But I really enjoyed painting this. I knew at this point that this was going to work really well. I love the colours. I love the pastel sketch. Making the pastel sketch took uh, both the pastel drawing and the digital drawing, took all of the guesswork out of the painting because I knew it was going to work. I knew the colours looked good. Uh, I was very happy with where I was going. So I painted with real confidence, really. And I could just go in with those bright colours. So I would encourage anybody that's going to um, produce their own painting to do, uh, if you've got some pastel sketch, do a, a sketch first. Well, you can use any medium you like, really. But the digital one is really cool because you're not actually using any paints or materials. I could have done a little oil painting if I wanted uh, in Art Rage. And it just... Um, takes the guesswork out of it and it saves you using up expensive art materials. That tree there stops you sort of your eye wandering out of the painting on the left hand side. It keeps you looking at the scene and, and your eyes moving around the canvas. So all these darks that are going in are just a combination of the, the cobalt blue and the uh, magenta, quinacridone magenta. And then they appear a little bit darker when they mix in with that uh, burnt sienna, which is that really nice vibrant red. I'm also, you, I put brushfuls of, you'll see sort of deeper reds in there. That is the pure uh, quinacridone magenta brushed in as well. So um, I'm kind of overpainting some of the uh, blocking in that I've done as I'm going, which is um, probably not the best way forward. I, I kind of got carried away with a little bit of the detail and really I wanted to um, do the blocking in. So there you can see I'm sort of cleaning up my brushes. I probably had a wipe down of the palette and I'm guessing I'm going to change my brush now. Yeah, I've picked up a, a different brush because I'm going to go in with some lighter colour. And I didn't want the um, colour on that dark brush to pollute um, these, those nice vibrant colours. I wanted them to go on clean. So I'm squeezing out some more paint. I'm just wondering what I'm going to do next, to be honest. I'm just going to um, whiz this forward till we've got the uh, colours mixed and I'm painting again. I've got a feeling I'm mixing the um, Indian yellow that will mix in. Mixing a bit of the Indian yellow with the liquid, which uh, it appears is that that's exactly what I did because there's the Indian yellow going in there. So that's a uh, pure colour. I haven't 
um, mixed it with anything else other than um, the colours that it blends into on the canvas. The brush was clean, so there was nothing else to pollute it. I'm just trying to get this. If you look at the pastel drawing, I've got this sort of um, yellow area and green area. And I'm putting that in. And you, you can see on the painting, I put a lot more of the bright yellow area in than I have on the actual uh, pastel drawing. But that stays really nice and bright because I've stopped the, I've, I've made sure that I haven't polluted it with any other colors. And then when I put these other brush strokes in, as you can see going in there, it mixes with the purple and you get a, a variation of the color. And it's just a way of stopping your colors becoming um, polluted and getting everything gray. Put in a little bit of the burnt sienna mixed in with the uh, yellow there or the Indian yellow. Actually, the bright yellow bit, that may well be the, um, I'm sure it is in actual fact, the primary yellow, because that's what gave me those, uh, the really bright yellow color. So I'd started off with the Indian yellow uh, around the edges where it was next to the purples and that dark green, and then use the um, primary yellow to get the bright yellow in the middle, bottom third of the painting. Just playing with the trees a little bit, putting some more color in there. This to me looks like it's burnt sienna. Using the um, pure colours with not a lot of mixing made it very easy to sort of squeeze out more colour and, and not have to worry about uh, getting the same colour again. The Most of the mixing was the cobalt blue and the uh, quinacridone magenta for all of the uh, purples. And once I'd mixed up the purples, I could add that sap green to um, get that dark green again. And then I used some sap green with the uh, primary yellow for a, a brighter green mixed with some titanium white. But I haven't got into the titanium white at all yet. I'm just using pure uh, color or hue. There's no, no tinting going off at all. So you can see that every brushstroke or mark I make is very methodical. I'm thinking what I'm doing. It looks as though everything's just sort of splashed on haphazard and without a lot of uh, thought and care. But when you see it in real time, it is um, very careful, carefully placed brushstrokes every single step of the way. So this is the um, purple mix with the sap green. I'm leaving uh, some area to the uh, left of the canvas, underneath the tree on the left, because I want to put some lighter color in that. On the sketch, it's sort of pink, but I, um, I changed the color slightly which you'll see in a minute or two that's going in now yeah so this is the um indian yellow i really like that color it's transparent and i just got this sort of flat field feel to it letting the uh paint on the canvas sort of mix in with it slightly to get that sort of darker line just gives the effect of a, a distant field with probably less light on it. So 
So I know, I remember feeling very chuffed at this point, thinking everything was going really well, hoping and praying that I wasn't going to mess it up, overpaint it, overwork it. Happy to say I didn't. So I strengthen up some of the uh, purple. You can see it looks almost black. And it's just the um, quinacridone magenta cobalt blue and a little bit of the sap green that just makes it that gives it that darker look. So I've sort of gone in with some definitely some darker tones than um, I did in the pastel sketch. If you look, I've sort of more purple, less blue, so it's sort of warmer and some darker tones. This now is cobalt blue mixed with a little bit of titanium white and some liquid to uh, make a very uh, thin wash. And notice I'm going up to the edge of the tree, but I'm not actually touching the tree at the minute. And that's just to make sure I keep that brush nice and clean and I'm not picking up and polluting the brush with any other colors. I decided to go in with that one inch decorator's brush. I thought I was getting too many brush strokes. So I'm not really blending it out so much as uh, just making bigger brush strokes. It, I wasn't thinking about blending so much there. There we go, doing the same thing again just making sure I can still see the brush strokes. And then I start to just push the blue into the trees and you get these nice soft edges where the paint merges together. I had to wipe the brush there. That got a little bit dirty. So you can see that sort of hard edge that I didn't want. I start using the side of the brush so it doesn't um, pollute the blue too much. And I'm leaving the white for the blue because I want to put a nice pink blue. So that's going to be titanium white mixed with the magenta. Looks like I'm mixing that up now. So I'm going in with the magenta and white for this nice warm color uh, of the sky, the bottom part of the sky. And I'm going to take that right down to that um, distant line of trees you can see i'm using my one inch decorators brush oops smudged it there a little bit just sort of softening it in into the sky i'm not i don't go crazy with blending i like to see the brush strokes when i paint so it's important that i don't let them all merge together and you can see i'm sort of cutting in there so it doesn't quite touch the uh, that those distant hills, and then I'm just letting them it merge into the trees. That little bit of yellow I do blend out, but it adds to it. I quite like the effect that we've got this sort of yellow and pink. And now I'm using a smaller brush, nice and clean. get this color in in between those tree trunks so sort of trying to get them in in one stroke if I can and then when I come to do the uh, the big empty square where this actual sunlight is where the Sun is shining through the trees I'm looking at the uh, original pastel drawing and I, real, I realize I, my painting is a little bit square and I need to sort of push it up into the tree a little bit. So you'll see me start to uh, push the paint up into the uh, tree in a, a minute or two. It looks like the purple on the right hand side of the painting is really, really pale, but it's not. That's the um, light 
uh, coming through the window, I guess, shining on the canvas and making it look much lighter than it really is. In actu in reality, it is quite dark. It's almost, well, it is as dark as the uh, purple on the uh, left-hand side of the tree on the left. So that's just a sort of a, an illusion created by the sunlight coming in through the window. So I'm just painting up so that those trees of uh, the sky meets the uh, tree, meets the bottom of that um, distant tree line. And I just let it sort of merge over it and just blend very slightly just to add a little bit of aerial perspective. Just pushing tiny little bits of um, that pale pink color into the tree. Now, I'm using a color I haven't used at all so far, and that's Thalo Turquoise. I've mixed that with a little bit of titanium white because I want to put this sort of turquoise color. You can see it on the pastel drawing. I want to get that into the sky as well. And I'm going to uh, put brush strokes of this in uh, various places on the canvas, just so it sort of um, ties all of the composition together and it's not just a sort of an isolated area of turquoise in the sky. I want it in the trees, I want it in the foreground. So I'm just gonna add some uh, brushfuls of that once I get the sky done, but at the minute, and you can see I'm not, I'm not worried about blending. I just want to get those strokes in. I want to see the cobalt underneath it. I want it to come down into that pink area. So I'm almost, uh, I'm treating it very, very light, just dabbing on light little brush strokes. And now I've got a fistful of brushes uh, because I've sort of, every time I want to light, or a new color I've changed I've picked up another brush so that I'm not polluting the brushes all the time and I've picked up some of the pink color and just sort of dabbing on the top half and then that picks up a little bit of the blue so then I transfer that into the bottom half so I'm kind of blending with the paint that's on the canvas but not blending I'm not sort of trying to soften them off I'm just sort of um creating another, uh, mixing the paint on the canvas, then lifting it off and then placing it on again. If you get what I mean. There, I've, I've lifted a bit more color off the uh, palette. Just to get that sort of graduated sky without actually blending. And now I'm gonna concentrate on the light coming between the trees. And just start, add a few highlights. So this is the magenta and titanium white color. I'm really liking the fact, I'm very happy the fact that I've kept it really loose and not gone into any detail. I've kept the colors nice and clean because I've kept my brushes clean. I've kept wiping them. I'm not using any uh, thinners, um, turpentine or anything like that. All I'm using is the liquid to thin the paint down. I'm pretty much using uh, neat paint now though. And you can see how the uh, colors that I'm putting on now are on the pastel drawing. I'm paying close attention to that pastel drawing and trying to reproduce some of those highlights pretty much as they are in that, that drawing. Picking up that turquoise again, look, that's in the sky, placing that onto the uh, tree. So it sort of echoes that color there. Let's get some in the foreground. And it blends as you put the brushes on because the thin, the paint is really thin on the canvas. 
it's sort of mixing on the canvas, creating all these other colours. It's really very exciting to do and, and watch those colours appear before you. And again, you can see them on the pastel drawing. I'm just loving the vibrancy I'm getting here. Putting that tur toy turquoise. Can't talk. The turquoise on the tree to the left in the uh, foreground field. So I'm looking at the that yellow area now, and I know it needs to be muted back, but I also want to use that to lead your eye up to the trees, um, the clump of trees on the uh, top right or on the uh, third on the right hand side. So you can see I'm putting a few brush strokes in that create a diagonal that are going to take you into that scene. But I'm also aware that that big bright yellow uh, blob in the middle foreground needs to be toned back so you're not um, focusing on that instead of the trees. Picking that yellow up and just adding a few strokes into the trees just to echo that. There, and then a few more little yellow strokes in the foreground. So this is titanium white mixed with the primary yellow. I still haven't done that square underneath the, uh, the where the sun is underneath the tree. Uh, I'm gonna have to look at that in a minute. But I'm sort of looking at the painting now uh, after the event and very conscious that um, of things that I changed so I'm using the uh, dark colour that I mix with the magenta, cobalt, blue and sap green to put these um, trunks back in. And I'm looking at the um, area, the dark area on the right hand side, the purple area, and thinking that looks a little bit empty and it needs something going in there. So I just sort of use the brush to draw in some tree trunks and... Uh, it's, it's rather than drawing in, I'm just sort of pushing the paint away and sort of scraping it off the canvas almost to put these new tree trunks in. You can uh, just see them appear in there. And then I would go in with a little bit of dark color just to make that sort of the darkest area of the painting. Just so we've got the, the, the contrast between the sunlight coming through the tree and the silhouetted trees is going to be the the darkest area on the whole of the painting which makes that the focal point I'm watching this now and I, really when I was painting it didn't feel like I was going this slow it felt like I was really um, blitzing through it and was painting really really quickly and it, it's quite um, a surprise to see how slow I actually paint I'm going to use a bit of um, burnt sienna I think putting in a few with um, smaller brush strokes just to give the impression of some leaves. Um, I quite like that. I thought that 
really um, emphasized the leaves on the trees and the smaller branches because everything was all pretty much of a, a similar size. And putting those smaller strokes in, I think, really set it off. A little bit of the turquoise going in. I'm obviously mixing paint up there. I do a lot of standing back as well. So every couple of brush strokes, I'll sort of stand back and look at it. So that's going to cause a lot of sort of waiting time in between the, the painting as well. I think I'm going to need to get another camera positioned on the um, palette so you can see how I'm mixing colors i wanted some light at the top of the tree and coming in sort of breaking between the branches of these two clumps of trees the sort of red tree and the trees that are in shadow on the right hand side so i was quite bold at putting in these strokes and then i also use an, a nice warm color and it's essentially the indian yellow to um overpaint the gaps between the trees and also put on an, an, a bit of an halo or a diffusion of sort of yellow light in that area so then at last i've gone in and put in that um darker area area and then you can see this sort of i said it's a halo i don't know if that's the right word but where the light is sort of blasting through the trees you get this really warm orangey color not so apparent in the pastel drawing but i wanted to do that um, on the painting and you can see i'm trying to put the highlights in there with a little bit of titanium white there we go just to make that pop a little bit and then i decide that the pink next to that um, titanium white looked quite odd. So I needed to um, paint it out at the edge of the tree and then just soften it into the, that pink. Just to sort of, oops, there I smudged that. That turquoise is such a staining pigment. So I just sort of wipe that away a little bit. There we are. And just sort of, not you know didn't go crazy with the blending but just brought that orangey color into the pink and that gave the impression of this um autumn sun and that's what i've called the painting or um autumn sun um shining between those tree trunks giving these this really warm soft glow So I'm about, I guess, seven or eight minutes away from uh, finishing the painting now. So I'm just sort of going in, getting in the final details. So I've done all the blocking in. I've pretty much got all the colors where I want. So I'm now just looking at detail and I'm going in, um, strengthening those tree trunks. There's a bit of pure burnt sienna. I felt that the light, the sun behind them would um, make them pop with this bright red color. Still haven't addressed the bright yellow in the foreground, but I'm just sort of putting in tiny little dots of, of color to represent the smaller leaves instead of big clumps of leaves just to me that makes all the difference doing the same on the tree on the left
So I think I'm, um, I was getting to the end of it and then I stood back and that's probably when I realized that the yellow was um, a little bit on the strong side. I'm itching to do that because it's really irritating me because I, I know that it's an issue. I probably hadn't seen it while I was painting at this point. Oh, here we go. This is it. I've uh, realized that it's it needs knocking back. So you can see I've gone in with this uh, green color, which again is the cobalt blue, the quinacridone magenta, and the sap green. just to create a diagonal to lead you up to there. Getting those dark colors in. The darkest area that I mentioned earlier that's gonna draw your eyes to that. I'm still gonna overpaint that yellow a little bit more. But we are getting a nice diagonal appearing. Carefully placing every brushful on there. And then I mix some, uh, take some of that dark color. What I did, uh, uh, and just put on these little um, indication of leaves. When I cleaned the palette earlier on, I sort of scraped all the paint that I'd mix together and box it all together to get this dark green. And I just put that to one side of the palette thinking I might get to use that a bit later on. And I did, I, I used it here just to put these um, darker strokes for the leaves on there. It's all, it's all about impression, giving you an imp letting your mind fill in all the gaps and Decide what the objects are. A little bit more of that turquoise. Overpainting that yellow. Just knocking it back a little bit more. So this is a green that I've mixed up with sap green and the um, primary yellow. Mixing it with a little bit of white as well. There we go, that's it with the white. Just to put a few highlights on that bottom right hand corner so this really is very very close to the end of the painting i'm just sort of putting a brush full on standing back putting another brush full on standing back again and generally really taking my time and that is it that i'm very happy with that now so i'm just going to get it signed i'll pick up a, a, a real small sable Get the old signature on there. I'm using the mole stick to steady me hand because I shake like crazy. And a um, couple of dabs of paint just to get that on. Stand back again, admire it. Fistful of brushes in me hand. Pop the mole stick down. There we go. That is it. That is my really easy... Uh, autumn sun painting I really hope you've enjoyed this video if you have uh, please give me a thumbs up uh, don't forget to subscribe because I've got lots more videos like this and hopefully I will see you all in the next one bye